points that you bring up, I think we have to take it as a community and look at the history that got us to where we are today. A lot of the schools that we have that are low census schools 12, 15 years ago were full. We've had a large shift of people out of communities in different parts of the county. And what ends up happening is each time you close one of these schools, you affect that neighborhood dramatically. And since I've been on the board, we've closed six or seven schools. We've got a number of schools that we're looking at closing, but in order to do that, there's a process that you need to go through so you don't leave empty buildings and sort of create waste and make us look like urban Detroit. So I don't think it's people don't want to close schools. What we want to do is to close schools the right way. So what we do is we bring synchronicity into the situation. We have more kids in each school can offer more programming. I think there was an article in Commercial Appeal yesterday that said taking into account cost of living and all these other factors, uh, community resources, Tennessee is the lowest state in the union in how much we spend on public education. We're lower than Mississippi and Arkansas when you take those into account. And if you look at the poverty rate in Memphis and you look at what we've got, we have other things that we spend money on other than just getting teachers and teachers assistance there. We have counselors that we need. We have special needs students that have other issues. So the student bodies are very different uh, in how, how it works. So the, your, the point, if you're looking at it, Commissioner Barker, from the outside, makes sense when you're trying to compare apples to apples. But we don't necessarily have apples to apples. My kids, you know, they go to public school here in Memphis. They don't need a lot of extra resources. I take them on vacations. They go to museums. They see other things that your kids do. So if we want to give an equal or an equitable education, it requires a little bit more money. So when we give you that wish list of $145 million, part of what we were trying to do was to try to convince you of why those things are important. Part of that, $15 million for our custodial people. Those are people who are making a living wage. They're our parents. They're our kids. When we fire them and outsource that, we directly affect their family structure and the ability of them to provide a good nurturing environment for those kids.